If you heard about building out an enterprise home lab and thought it was just for elitists or those with passion, and you're wondering what is exactly the point, this video is for you. So hi everybody, my name is Justin Henderson and I'm here today to talk about this concept of an enterprise grade lab. Now, Specifically, I'm talking like a cybersecurity lab, but it could be for operations, network, IT, it doesn't matter. Really, if I get straight to the point, what is the point? <laughs> I see a lot of posts that like labs are for those who are elitists or maybe, maybe sadists who, you know, their passion is IT and that's all they do and why? What's the point? Like, is it for everybody? Is it, is it just, you know, maybe for me, if some of you are like, yeah, well, home lab, right? So I want to talk about this because I feel like we're kind of missing the point. We're missing the point in that we're trying to throw everybody in the world into the same bucket that we're in. And we think differently. We operate differently. We have different motivations. Now, I don't care if you want to build a home lab that's enterprise grade because you're trying to make more money. Maybe you're passionate about it and you just want to figure out how things work. And so your, your mind is just focused on this puzzle and you want to get, get the pieces to shift together. Well, that's fine too. Maybe you're doing it because you need to figure out how to do it so that you can learn to resell it as like professional services on a contract basis. The motivations between home lab and why we build them out. And, and even then, like when I say home lab, it shouldn't just be a home lab. Employers, please, like seriously, give your employees some equipment. Let them learn things. It's often a lot cheaper than the other stuff out there. So let's talk through this. Let's talk through some of the motivations between a lab. First off, I want to talk about the level you're at. And what I mean by that is if you're deep into your career or you're starting off, you're building a lab out for completely different reasons. Look, let's go with those of you who are new into the, say, the information security field. If I'm talking to you for a second, focus for a second, I would heavily encourage you to build out a lab, regardless of your motivations, because here's the thing. I, I try to mentor a lot of folks in the information security. I get to teach a whole bunch of people, and I get asked this question all the time. Hey, I'm, I'm going into information security. Maybe I'm getting ready to graduate from college. What do you think I should do? Should, should, should I do this whole cyber defense thing that Justin keeps pushing? Maybe, well, what is cyber defense? Is it, is it like firewalls and security network equipment? Or is it cloud security? Do I get to tune things like web application firewalls? Am I working back end securing Active Directory using tools like Pingcastle? And well, maybe I'm doing coding and I don't know. I don't know. I'm all over. Oh, detection. Oh, Justin, you keep talking about that. That's great. Okay. You see the problem now? That's cyber defense. What about forensics? Well, which aspect of forensics? What about red team or pen testing? And they're not the same thing. And then there's branches within those. And maybe you want to do specialized stuff like industrial control. And oh, wow. Information security is not just one thing. <laughs> No, it's not, and that's the, that's the point. So you come to me and you'll ask, well, what should I do, Justin? What best fits me? And I can't answer that question. And so what I'll say, and what many other mentors in this field will say is, at first you need to dabble. Play with a little bit of this, play with a little bit of this. I love cyber defense, and I especially love like detection, like security operations stuff. That doesn't mean it fits for you, and I don't wanna, you know, make you fit my mold. So a lab in your case is your dabbling. You get to play with a little bit of everything in your lab. You get some of that hands-on experience and practical theory application in whatever piece of that lab excites you the most. Forensics, cyber defense, intrusion detection, prevention controls. Maybe you just want to be an all-round defender. That's great. Huge, huge need for that. But if you're starting your career, the lab is about getting you to dabble in all these different technologies 
to pick what you want to do. Okay, all right, all right. What about when you're later in the career? Well, part of it is obviously to stay on top of your game because things do change at a rapid pace. Sometimes it's new shiny that's just a same implementation of an old shiny. <laughs> like, um, well, containers we've technically had back in the day with things like CH roots and jails or even solar winds the way they, not solar winds, I apologize. Uh, Solaris. <laughs> Let me caveat that. Okay. Too much solar winds talk lately. So some technologies just kind of get reinvented or they're easier to apply moving forward. Hyper-V versus vSphere versus Proxmark versus AWS, Azure. There's, there's a decent amount of overlap. It's just what part of the infrastructure do you control? So later in our career, it's trying to stay current and it also can help us, like, let's say, let's say, let's see for a second, you're applying for a job. So motivation factor here is, I want to get a new job, I'm entering the field and I want to get a job, right? Something like this. Or you're, maybe you're even trying to do a consulting engagement, so you need to know what you're talking about. Well, in the lab, you're doing those things. So let's say you're trying to work with me. I've got an open application, you put it in, you're like, hey, Justin, I want to come work for you. And so I start asking you questions. Hey. Uh, have you ever been behind a IDS IPS? Have you ever done cloud log collection? Have you ever had an interface with some APIs? Have you ever deployed a sim? And all of a sudden, I'm interviewing tons of people. But you come up and you're like, oh yeah, uh, you know. So I've not personally like deployed a sim for like a hundred thousand endpoint organization. But you know what I have done in my lab? I've deployed you know, the Elastic Stack, or I've deployed Splunk, or I've done Curator Community Edition, and I was collecting these logs, and you know, I've got it connected to an Azure Active Directory environment, and you start chatting, and you don't have to know all of that. But the simple fact that you started to talk about those things, it's not so much about passion. Like, I'm passionate, I love my career, I really do. That's not everybody, and that's totally fine. If you, if you don't believe me, check out Chris Sanders. He's passionate about other things. IT is not exactly his passion, but I look up to him and he's fantastic for our community. It's okay. So what it's about though is as an employer, I want to hire say you or somebody. And now all of a sudden I realize that a lot of people have not touched these technologies before, but you've at least done something similar to it, or you've had some hands-on knowledge with it. Maybe not at a hundred thousand endpoint scale, but you've done it. Who do you think I'm more likely to hire? My business partner and I actually got in a huge argument over this. Yeah, not, not an argument, just like a, a friendly discussion, a friendly debate. Because I was like, hey, let's take someone that you're hiring. Like, we've interviewed hundreds of people in our careers. Now, let, let's say for a second someone came to them and they said they've done this, 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 and a lot. Do you think you would likely hire that person? Like, well, I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily hire them just on that. I was like, how many people have you interviewed that have actually said that? And he's like, like none, one. <laughs> did you hire that one? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, all right, well, there's 100% on his side. And for me, I've interviewed hundreds of folks. And how many of them have actually played in a lab? Whether their own home lab or an employer's lab, but they're telling me about this. Maybe two, three. They might have a lab where they have hardware, but they've never done anything with it. That doesn't count as a lab. So you can see here your chances of getting a job, getting a promotion, being able to enter the contract space and do professional services. It's a little bit higher with a lab. And instead of paying for $6,000 plus training classes, plus certifications, plus time off from work, and Maybe you get some hardware, whether it's off eBay used or some lower cost, or maybe you use your laptop with virtualization. You can build some of the most enterprise grade stuff with what you probably already have. Now, I'm going to brag on myself a little bit here. I'm not actually trying to brag, but just to kind of set this landscape, I have 61 certifications. I've been doing contracting for 20 years now, 15 of that in the information security space. 
I was doing contracts when I was 13. Why? Well, I do love this career, and I was deploying Active Directory domain controllers and Windows Server update servers and trying to do patch management and Pixie Boot workstation installs at 13 with my brother. Devin Henderson, whoop, shout out, love you, bro. And I made money. Like, I was making, we, we sold services for like a couple hundred dollars a month that they would just keep paying us to maintain those things. I was 13, he was 16, and it wasn't a whole lot of money, but for a 13 and 16 year old it was, and so that's kind of how I entered the space. And I'm just gonna flat out say, I, with 61 certifications, I have attended tons of training. I've read lots of books. The most practical knowledges I've ever picked up though were in my lab. So okay, so there's different motivations, different stages of life. Let's, let's talk about how I can help you out here, because this is really where this is going to. I hope you understand the point behind the lab and that you don't have to be passionate. And it, motivation could be money, it could be puzzle game, it could be anything. How do you do it? I don't want to just say it, build a lab. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a, another video where I do a whiteboard session and I'm going to plan out all these different enterprise technologies I've seen in organizations small to large, draw them out, and then I'm going to start doing YouTube sessions on each step showing you exactly how to set them up so that you can do it. You can learn by doing it. And I'll try to explain it as I go through. And I'm probably talking like 20 hours, 10 to 20 hours of YouTube videos on how to do Active Directory, public key infrastructure, certificate authorities, things like IPsec, hacking tools, patch management, group policy hardening, things like deploy your own SIM, network security monitoring, next gen firewalls, TLS inspection where you break open encrypted packets and the list is gonna go on and on, proxies, some cloud stuff, containers, hypervisors versus virtualization versus, again, containers. And I'm going to try to make the most enterprise-grade home lab you could possibly build with a walkthrough through all of it via YouTube. Would you join me on this journey? It's free. <laughs> it will only help you. After I go through and take all this, I'm contempt contemplating taking, say, 10 to 20 hours of those YouTube videos and turning it into 40 to 60 hours of formalized training, but at a really low cost, like hundreds of dollars max. I don't know if that would be interesting to you. Let me know in the comments below on this one. And stay tuned, subscribe, because you and I, we're going to make this happen. So if you want to have one of the most sophisticated, enterprise home labs or work labs employers please give yourself your employees hardware stay tuned i'll make recommendations on hardware all that and we will do this and we'll walk in this journey together so let's do it